Hello students. In this video I would like to show you one particular feature with Google Earth Pro and that's called batch geocoding. That's where you can take tabular data and make a bunch of waypoints in one shot. So on the way to that explanation I'd like to go over a couple of the differences between Google Earth which I have open here and Google Earth Pro which I have open here. I'd like you to have them both installed for a few other exercises we'll be doing. They're both valuable tools, but knowing the difference, of course, will be very helpful. So again, on the surface, they look very similar. Most of it is under the hood. So this first couple examples, I'll just be using Google Earth. This, of course, works in both the free and pro version. Little bit of a review. When you search, which is in the upper left-hand corner of your Google Earth window, it's um it's kind of a fuzzy search. You can you can type in you know large areas like North Dakota, and it'll zoom in. You can type in cities. So there's Fargo, North Dakota, and of course you can type in addresses. And you'll get a very specific pinpoint location. So you know, that's three ways you can search. You can search for a category. So if I just typed coffee, it searches the context of your current view. So if I was in another city, it would only look in that area. And what we're doing here is really geocoding. It's, it's somewhat transparent geocoding. But as I search for this, it's finding these locations and, and showing me in this list. And there's ways to save this list but the batch geocoding, which I'll show you in a moment, is a lot nicer. Let's just type park. All right, so another kind of neat thing you can search for is intersections. So not only you know general to very specific addresses, you can search for intersections. So if I type Robert Street and 6th Avenue Fargo, it'll give me another pinpoint location. So that's kind of neat. Um, the last thing I'd like to show you here is latitude and longitude. If you search for those values separated by a comma, it will also find that. So this particular lat long pair takes us to Boulder. And uh, let's search for coffee while we're over here. Just so you can see it, it's always keeping you in context. So as always with these videos, please feel free to pause and rewind and follow along as much as you would like. So again, what we're doing is a really transparent geocoding one thing at a time, whether it's a category or um, a vague address or a specific address. Anything that you can type in this search window, if that can exist in tabular fashion, it can be batch imported, but only with Google Earth Pro. So let me go ahead and bring Google Earth Pro up here. One difference you'll notice with Google Earth Pro is if you go to File, you've got an option to import, not just open. And I've also got another file here. It's an Excel spreadsheet that contains the National Register of Historic Bridges. There's a couple thousand of them. And in this spreadsheet contains lots of good info, you know, the date it was listed, it groups it, it has the, the state address, um, the city address, it even has the builder, so lots of good stuff, the name. But at the end of this, it's got a centered lat and a centered long column. One is latitude, one is longitude. So we could really use any of these um, address type fields to batch geocode this, but if you have lat and long, that would be the best thing to go with. That's usually going to be the most accurate. This is very, very important. Google Earth Pro cannot import Excel spreadsheets. It has to import what's called a comma separated value. And uh, we'll go ahead and export this as a CSV. Another kind of a little tricky thing, CSVs are supposed to be a standard text-based, really plain Jane file type. But what I found out is if you have the option, select Windows comma separated CSV, not just the uh, can CSV. It might be more of a Mac thing, but if you're on a Mac and you're working in Excel, try to save this as a Windows comma separated value. It's still tabular data. It's just saved in a different format.
So I'll go ahead and save this. And now it is a CSV. Let's get that out of the way. Back in Google Earth Pro, to do a batch geocode, so here's really the, the meat of this discussion. I will go to Import, navigate to that folder, and I can see that file right here, National Register of Bridges.csv. You'll see the other one is grayed out. I can't even select that. But when you select a CSV that works, right away you should be prompted with this data import wizard. And this is really just to verify the data that you're working with. Uh, if, if, it, if this looks okay, which it does, you know, that's good. If this looks really jumbled down here, that's an indication that something is wrong with your file. We have a comma separated value or comma separated value document. You can also do tab separated. There's other kind of delimiters, but you know, the default settings are fine. So let's go ahead and do the next step in our wizard. So this data set does have a lat and long, but I'll leave this checked saying that it does not just to show you what happens if you leave that checked. The next screen will allow you to select the categories that are for city, state, postal code, etc. And the more accurate these are, the more accurate your results will be. So if you have an actual address, you'd want to use that. If you've only got the city, you can use that, but it will be a very general placement for that place mark. So I'm going to go ahead and go back and say that this does have the data set. And one is called centered lat. The other one is called centered long. Now when I hit next, I'll see a slightly different window. Just ignore this for now. This is to specify uh, the value type for each one of these fields. I've got a lot of fields in here, so it's kind of jumbled anyway. But let's hit finish, see what happens. You'll get warned if it has more than 2,500 features. I'll just say import all. And do you want to apply a style template? I'll save this for another lecture because um, it, can, it can get a little tricky. So I'll just say no for now. Now right away you won't see anything. That's because for some reason Google Earth puts it under your temporary places and you have to turn it on. So I'll go ahead and click there. So there we go. There's a batch geocode of the National Register of Historic Bridges. If I click on it, I should see a pop-up that contains all of the other tabular data. So there are ways to clean this up. That gets into the styling of this. And, and the different applications will call it a different thing. Google Earth calls it styling. We can make it look different. We can, we can essentially make this its own little website for each one that contains photos. By default, it just pumps in the other tabular information from the file type. So, you know, if I wanted to, I could have cleaned up that Excel file before importing it and um, that would look different. So there's two ways to really style how these look. One is to apply that style wizard that it prompted us, which I said no. The other, a little bit easier way is to just right click on it when it's under your places. And you know what, one other thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to drag this out of my temporary places, otherwise it will, um, it will be deleted when I quit. So now it's under my places. It's always saved with Google Earth. When I reopen this, it will still be there. If I want to save that, I can right click, do a save as. And then once it's saved, you can open it in Google Earth Normal. You can upload it to Bing Maps, Google Maps, um, ArcGIS software. KML is really becoming a standard. So, But we want to just add some basic styling to this. So I'm going to do a Git Info. On Windows, that will say Properties. On the Mac, it will say Git Info. And then we've got our little dialogue here. So I'm going to go ahead and click this icon here. And these are all the different icons we can select. And we can see that changing over here. But what's kind of neat is you can even add your own. So I'll just go and browse to this custom icon that I made. We should see that update. They're a little bit big, so I'll just take the scale down. All of these files will be available for you to play around with on the class Blackboard. All right, that looks pretty good. And uh, you know, I'll change the altitude. I'm going to make these really more push pins with sticks. 
then just uh, click extend to ground, let's make it higher. There we go. So here are all of my historic National Register bridges. You know, I could clean this, I could clean up the, the spreadsheet file before I imported this, if I was just looking at a specific state. Um, there's a whole bunch of ways to really think about this information and how it's imported. But what I really wanted to show you is a batch geocode. Go ahead and play with this file. Um, try a different type of, uh, try to import it using the addresses, see what happens. Play around with saving it. Let me know if you have any questions.